Okay, next is part C and we have available inventories here and determine the net requirements if we want to have 50 units available. Okay, so the net requirement of 50 units for item A. So, 12C item A, so the gross requirement, not, not net requirement, gross requirement, we need 50 units. Okay. So, available, how many units are already available on hand? There's 5 units available on hand. So, the net requirement is 50 minus 5 is 45. So, we need 45 more units of A. Now, we need to proceed with this computation in the order of low level code, which we So, remember the low level codes are in alphabetical order, so we can proceed in the same order. So, B, now we need to look at the bill of materials. So, you need one unit of B for each A. So, the requirement is 45. So, gross requirement here is 1 times A. So, that is 1 times 45 is 45. And how much is available? B, 5 units are available. So, 45 minus 5 is 40. And 40 is the net requirement for B. Okay. Next is C. And how many units of C do we need for each A? We need 2 units for each A. So, this is 2 times a again net requirement of A, do not take the gross requirement and multiply here, you need to go to the net requirement. So, 1 times 45, I am sorry, 2 times 45 is 90 and C, we have 10 units available. Um, so, 90 minus 10 is 80, 80 is the net requirement for C. Okay, next is D. Now, D appears in two different places. So, we need one unit of D for each B, four units for each A. So, four times A plus one times B. So, that is equal to four times 45 plus 1 times 40 and that is equal to 220. And now we have how many units of D is available? We have 20 units of D available. So, 220 minus 20 is 200 is the net requirement for D. Okay, next is E. Okay, so we have E, we need two units of E for each B. So, two times B and that is equal to two times again, remember net, net requirement is what you have to use. Okay, A D. Now, how many units of E is already available? 50 units are available. So, 80 minus 50 is 30 and next is F. Now, F, you have to be very careful with F. Okay. Now, F, 
even though f appears twice, but it is the same parent. So we have already combined 4 for a and 1 for b, All we have already combined these two d's together. So you should not count these f and g once here and once there. You have already combined the requirements, so you need to take that into account only once. In other words, you have to look for not how many times it appears, but how many unique parents are there for a given item. So since d counts as just the same parent, you have to count it only one time. So f only one unit of f is required for each d. So it is simply 1 times d and that is 200. So 1 times 200 is 200 and we have 150 available. So 200 minus 150 is 50 needed net requirement of 50 for D. Okay, next is G. Now G again, the same situation like F. It's the same parent here, so only one time. So you need one times D for G. And how many units of G is available? 50 units of G is available. So 200 minus 50 is 150 is the requirement. Okay. Next is H. Now H, we need 2 units of H for each E. So this is 2 times E. Okay. 2 times the net requirement of E is 60. And we have H 5 units available. So 60 minus 5 is 55. And finally, I and I we need only one unit of I for each E. So 1 times E is 30. Okay. So that is 30. And we have no i's available, so 0, so 30 minus 0 is 30. So this, uh, this is how you will compute the net requirements for A.